What's going on people? Back with a bang. This is The Money Management, back here to bring you guys some stocks to watch for this upcoming week. Uh, one thing I'd like to highlight before we begin is this is a four day trading week because of Good Friday, so there's no markets open on Friday. Please remember that. And I know someone's going to come in the Discord and say, oh, it's a four day trading week. Yes, it's a four day trading week. You've heard it here. Second of all, this week I'll be looking at the banks and the travel industry. You're going to see why in just a second. Now, before we dive into the earnings for this week, please remember, you can drop a thumbs up on this video and it will not cost you anything. Yes, that is real. You can drop a thumbs up, give this video a like, and it will not cost you anything. So please do that if you haven't done that already. Also, make sure to comment on the video. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you'd like to see maybe in other videos. Whatever you want to do, just comment. Also, subscribe if you're new around here. And of course, make sure to share these videos on Twitter, Instagram, wherever. Just share these videos. Share them with a friend, a family member, whoever. Just please share them. So let's look at the earnings for this upcoming week. Starting tomorrow, pre-market we have Mara. As you guys may have seen, crypto has been running up a little bit this weekend. So it will very, be very interesting to see how Mara does. Also, maybe look at Hut, Riot, Can, BTBT as sympathies of Mara. Next up, I'm going to fast forward to Wednesday because Wednesday is very interesting. We have some banks and we have also got uh, some airlines. So before open on Wednesday, JP Morgan, that's a bank. And then we have Delta as well before market open. So I'll be interested to see how JP Morgan performs, how uh, other banks like Wells Fargo um, perform. And with Delta announcing earnings as well, are we looking to see how United performs, American Airline performs, maybe even JetBlue, and potentially also the stocks like CCL and NCLH, which are both cruise lines. Then Thursday, before market open, we have TSM, that's a tech play, so semiconductors. We also have Wells Fargo before market open. Then another bank, Morgan Stanley. And guess what? Another bank, Goldman Sachs. And guess what? More banks, Citigroup and US Bank. So please look out for those. Now, one thing I'd like to highlight is in this period of time, you might have seen banks selling off after earnings, which is what we saw, I think, a few months back. The same could happen here again. So the idea might be to play their earnings run up and then sell before they announce their earnings. On the other hand, you could also get puts after they've announced. We'll see how it works out. We'll see how it pans out. But that's just one thing I wanted to put on your radar. Now, lastly, just to highlight, hey, there's still Sundial this week. That is one of those uh, marijuana stocks that could squeeze. So it could be interesting to see how that performs. And lastly, next week, so the 18th of April, we have Bank of America before market open. So while these banks are performing and, you know, announcing earnings, etc., it could also give us an indication of what happens with Bank of America going into next week. OK, so let's jump into trading view now and have a look at some charts. Also, please remember, if you don't have Chatterquant, you can grab access to Chatterquant. There's a link in the description below for you guys to check out. So let's start off with JP Morgan. That is a bank. Announcing earnings this week, pre-market Wednesday, just so you guys remember that. JP Morgan. So if you look at this past trading week, JP Morgan sold off very heavily, right? And then towards the end of the week, it started uptrending again, which is a good sign. Now this could be in anticipation of the earnings and that might mean that the earnings run up has begun. Now, I don't want to take anything for granted. So what I'll do here is just look at it on a few different time frames so you guys can get an idea of what's been happening. This is the one hour. We're scaling out by the way. There we go. We've been seeing the sell off now. It's trending up towards the moving average on the daily. I do like the daily chart for getting a good overview of what's happening or what's been happening. It could get rejected around 134. That would be something to look out for. But back to back green days to end the week. That could definitely be a positive sign. Maybe the stock is trying to tell us something. And as you guys know, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it's been down trading the whole of this year from highs of 170 all the way down to lows of 128. Now we're starting to recover. So could the anticipation of earnings start pushing that a lot higher? Who knows? It will definitely be on my radar to watch. Now let's check out some travel stocks. Delta Airlines. Actually, I just booked a flight with Delta Airlines a few minutes ago, which is quite interesting. But their prices are high right now, and the stock price is pretty low. So look at Delta. Trending below the moving averages on a daily, that means it's pretty bearish. It has been selling off the past week or so. And looking at the price it was at in January, the beginning of this year, until now, well, we're at a pretty similar level. We're slightly below where we were in January. January, we were trading just around... $39. Now we're trading around $36. So it is slightly down. But as you can see, it's had its ups and downs since then. So it hasn't really consolidated. It's just been a little bit erratic in my opinion. But let's check out what we're looking at for this week. So for this, we'll zoom in to the one hour chart. 
I'm telling you, my opinion here, it's the puts. It's the puts that are on. This past week, down trending, down trending. Still hanging below all the moving averages on the one hour chart, on the daily chart. On the 15 minute chart, I'm not so sure. Let's see. Eh, slightly below all the moving averages. On the five minute chart, same story. So the puts do look on with Delta Airlines here. Please do keep that in mind. Now, for the rest of the airline stocks, I'm going to let you guys come to the Discord to see what I think about them. And also, please do remember that the link to Discord is in the description below. So check that out. Now, let's look at a couple other stocks I'm watching for this week, beginning with Netflix. Netflix that sold off heavily at the end of last week is on my radar once again. I know you guys have seen it. And you're probably tired of seeing it. But hey, with certain stocks, when you just see that they're way oversold, you do want to keep your eyes on them. That's exactly what's happening with my Netflix stock here. Look at the daily chart, guys. Look at the daily chart. Netflix is way oversold. RSI is at 42. The stock is around 50% from its highs. $700 range. It's way oversold. So I'm looking at this for puts down to the $330 range before calls upwards. And of course, those long-term shares. Netflix is one of those companies which is not going away, at least in the short term. And overall, long term, it has a great potential return on your investment. That's what I like. Obviously, 410 was my level, you know, target price to get to from here, my first target price. So from here, that's around a $60 gain, which would be very nice if you get calls and, of course, if you get shares as well. So please keep your eyes on Netflix for a first a down, downward move this week and then upwards. So you can play this both sides. Another stock you can play both sides. Another stock you're probably tired of seeing, Apple stock, like symbol AAPL. So Apple, I'm looking to play to the downside now to around 167, which is my level, and then calls upwards. Of course, if it breaks, as it has just broken one of my levels, I would love to play this to the downside and get puts with a three, four dollar drop, and then again get calls up to the same levels that are drawn here. This is a similar move to what we did this past week, actually. We played puts to around here, then the calls up here. Now, remember that Apple is Spy's largest holding, so you can also look at Spy and play the downside and then the upside again, just like we did on Friday when we played the upside first, then the downside, as you can see, that's exact level to watch for SPY, but SPY is not gonna be on one of my stocks to watch this week. But I just wanted to say, if you wanna play Apple, you can play SPY. If you wanna play SPY, you can play Apple. They do have a direct correlation there. Now, let's look at UPS. That is my next stock to watch for this week. Be obvious what this one is on for, right? Yes, indeed, puts. Puts, puts, puts. It's very clearly bearish. It's been setting off for about a month already. And just check the levels here, guys. It's, it's, it's crazy. Look at that. It's below on all the moving averages. It's trying to break above, but I don't think it's going to break above and hold. It's done this a couple of times already. Up and sold off, then reached up again to the moving average and sold off. I mean, it's kind of testing it right now, but I don't see how it's going to break above and if it does break above you can play the calls but that's not my aim here again holding the moving average I expect it to break below honestly and let's check the five minute chart there we go again slightly below the moving average I am expecting a UPS sell-off hey if it happens it happens if it doesn't it doesn't but what I'm saying is this is my expectation so I'm trying to play puts down to around I'd say 186 yeah so a four dollar drop with UPS is what I'm looking for Another stock I'm looking to drop to a nice level of support is Tesla, pick symbol TSLA. The stock which I expect to hit $1,200 this month at one point. But in the meantime, I'm looking at trading it to the downside to around $1,000. You should see my level of support. Check the daily chart. There you go. My level there is $1,007. I expected to touch around that level, and if it holds there, then I will try and get calls again up to around 1100, maybe just under 1100. I would definitely look to get shares if it breaks below 1000 at any level, to be honest, uh, because long term I expect Tesla to go up. There is rumors about a stock split coming. I don't know how strong those rumors are, but I have heard those rumors. And if that is announced anytime soon or it is confirmed, hey, Tesla probably will rally. It usually does that. It has a tendency to do that off good news like that. So please look out for that. And one other thing I'd like to point out with Tesla is this is one of those that I would definitely prefer to day trade instead of swing trading. Uh, the next stock I'm going to look at in a second is a more for a swing, but Tesla is definitely one for the day trades in my opinion. 
I don't like swing trading it because it's too unpredictable. Look at this, the past seven, eight days, red, green, red, green, red, green. They had back to back green days, but still, I think that was from the weekend to the Monday. But overall, Tesla is just so erratic. I mean, this would have been a really nice trade, you know, in the middle of last month to the end of the month slash beginning of this month. But hey, that's very rare for Tesla. That's not very common. So just look at day trading this. And of course, if you want to swing trade it, be my guest. That's up to you. But that's not what I would rather do in this situation. Now let's look at a stock which I would like to swing trade this week. It is Taiwan Semiconductor, ticker symbol TSM. So like I said, they have earnings this Thursday. And I'm looking at puts with this one. As you can see, I have my two levels, so I'm very clearly looking at puts. But why am I looking at puts? Well, the past few months, it has been bearish. It's trending below all the three moving averages on the daily chart, on the four hour time frame as well, below the nine day, the 21 day, and the 100 day moving averages. It's trending below all of them, on the one hour as well, and uh, as you can guess, probably on the 15 minute and the five as well. So it's very clearly bearish, right? And I'm not going to go through all the time frames, but you get the idea, right? It's very clearly bearish. So what am I looking at for it? Well, you can see those two blue, bright blue lines there. And um, yeah, I'm looking at an $8 drop overall. My first level is $95. Second level is $91. And to be honest, if it does go below that, it could get really ugly this week. So definitely looking at TSM puts. This is a semiconductor manufacturing company. So that is uh, the tech sector. So if you guys know, tech has been very bearish recently. And uh, this is not really the time for tech. So yeah, just look at that and also look at AMD. We got into AMD calls at the end of last week. It's a bit of a gamble. I'll see how it pans out, but this is my thought process behind that. It seems to hit this level right here and bounce, hit this level and bounce. This is the daily chart. You can see it's happened about four or five times. If you look on a shorter time frame, you see it's happened multiple times across the past few weeks. I'm definitely looking at this to see if this holds and then we can start riding up again maybe about a ten dollar gain that's why i'm looking at calls but on the other hand i won't be surprised to see it drop five dollars drop below this line here because again it's trending below the moving averages it is kind of overly bearish so i do want to say just keep your eyes out because it is below all the moving averages but at the same time amd is one of those stocks it just needs a little push some good volume and some buying pressure and then it starts rising again before it does eventually sell off so with our calls you just got to be more of a sniper with that play and then i say go back to looking at puts or just leave it alone and sit on your hands there's never a bad thing just just sit on your hands now last but not least walmart takes some more wmt my top stock to watch for last week i've been watching it a couple weeks now and this is what i'm looking at for walmart a push towards 160 so as you can see right now it's had about what two weeks straight of green days one two three four five six seven eight nine something like that 11 days i think green in a row and it looks like it's pretty hot right now. The RSI is at 80. It's due a little bit of a pullback, right? But then you zoom in. Look at a one hour time frame. It's just pulled back to the moving average. Good sign, because if it holds ahead, it could be pushing up again. Look at a 15 minute chart. It's just pulled back. Again, close to the moving averages. Good sign if it holds there. Let's check the four hour chart. And what do you know, guys? Look at this. It could be ready to pull back to around 155, the moving average, and then the push again. And also, if I show you guys the five minute time frame, just check this out. Look at this. Look at this pullback. Look at this pullback. Look at this pullback, guys. Look at this pullback. Look at this pullback. So there we are. Pullback right to the moving average. I think it's bounced along there. And hey, if it keeps testing moving averages and then recovering, I like it. So Walmart, 160 calls for this week. 160 is my price target for this week. We could go above and beyond there. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the RSI in multiple different time frames, but it is slightly overextended. It is hot, so beware of a sell-off. I mean, this was a play which ran up, I think, over 300% this past week. And what's crazy about this play is the expiry is two weeks out, April 22nd. So if you had bought this past Friday's expiry or even, you know, upcoming Friday's expiry, you would have made some crazy returns on this. Like I said, we gave ourselves enough time to hit 155 and it ran up, I guess, about $7 this week alone. But again, I am looking at Walmart this week. I can't imagine, you know, this pulling back all the way to 152 and then um, selling off. I don't think that's going to happen. But yes, those are my stocks to watch for this week for this YouTube video. As always, I have the full watch list available on the Discord, so please come and check that out. Also, if you guys are new around here, you might not know, but I have a stock option starter pack. That is a bunch of 10 videos that you have access to for life, so please go and check that out. Uh, the link is in the description below. 
it covers the Greeks, my trading strategies, trading strategies, calls, puts, covered calls, how to trade in different markets. Strangely enough, right when I said that, someone just copped a stock option starter pack. So I don't know who that was or how you're watching, but um, yeah, well done. And I uh, look forward to helping you out. But that was very strange because right after I mentioned it and described what it was, then you know the sale popped up. So that was very strange, but it's good to see people invest in themselves. As always, like I said, the full available watches will be in the Discord. But we also have a free section there where you can come and live trade with us for completely free every single day in the lounge. So come and check out the Discord. Also check out all the other links in my description below. And like I said earlier, I appreciate you guys' support. So please do continue to keep supporting me. It does take a lot of time creating these videos, the watch lists, uploading, talking in the Discord, blah, 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 helping you guys out. All of that does take a lot of time. So I do appreciate your support. But overall, thank you guys so much for watching this video. We're looking forward to making a lot of money in the Discord once again this week. Bangers on bangers on bangers. Home runs, home runs, home runs making more money and helping people continue to learn so that's it from me i come to making you come to making see you guys next time for another video peace game over